So for a uh, project that I'm working on, I'm uh, trying to make spells and stuff of that sort. Uh, if you've watched other videos in this, like that I've worked on, uh, you'd know that I've made like a targeting system and such. Well, um, I wanted to make spells that, you know, can do stuff and uh, that will fire at the target that you choose, uh, much like what you'd see in an MMO, kind of like World of Warcraft, you know, something of the sort. Um, so the big thing that you want is to uh, make sure the spell always hits, that it can never be dodged, that no matter what, it's always going to hit. So like in this case, it doesn't matter how fast this player is changing vectors, uh, it will always hit the player. Because in a game like an MMO, you don't want that possibility of the projectile not actually hitting the player, or the, the target. So how I've accomplished this, and ironically it did take more uh, effort than I thought it was going to take. Um, so, you know, here's a projectile. Let me get this out of the way. You know, I got a basic setup here. You know, I just push E, and uh, if I'm locked on to a target currently, it will uh, basically just run a quick check of the target that I have selected. Uh, you know, it gets that actor location. And uh, in this case, I took the mesh, I wanted it to spawn from the hand, even though I don't have any animations um, on this character, you know, the, the third person character. I don't even have, I screwed up and I, I should have used the animation starter pack one, but I didn't, so. Uh, yeah, I have like no animations at all, other than the run jog animations. So, I uh, wanted to jump one too. But anyways, point is, you know, I, I just wanted it to mock, you know, a real situation where you might be firing the spell from a hand, like the right hand. So it um, it'll spawn a projectile. I created a separate blueprint for the projectile to handle all that. So uh, it just looks for the actor location and I find the look rotation between them and that's where you know it'll spawn the rotational transform to. So it spawns from the hand looking at the target and uh, after it does that it sends uh, some information to the projectile uh, blueprint. It sends the target that I have currently selected. So, if I can find my blueprints here, um, in this projectile, well, I'll go over the hit mechanic in a minute. Um, so it comes in, it's got that parameter of uh, the target, I should technically save it to a variable to keep these wires from being all over the place. So it comes in with that actor reference, and uh, it needs to always point toward the actor or the target that I want. And so it gets the location um, of the current of the projectile and of the actor, finds the look rotation, and it sets it as the new rotation. So when the homing you know comes in. Uh, well, the signal to fire this part here comes in. It'll toggle this gate open, and it can only do it the one time because each time you hit the the fire button in the character blueprint, it spawns a whole nother actor. So I don't have to worry about this being toggled open and closed and all that, unless I add that in. So you know, on the event tick, which this could be a timer, it could be whatever, but the event tick would probably be the most reliable. Um, in terms of like smoothing out interpolation and stuff. Um, yeah, it's going to come in, it's going to set the projectile orientation to always look at the actor. 
So then, um, now this could be done different ways. I set up a projectile movement on here with a pretty low base speed and a you know pretty decent uh, max speed. Other than that, you know, I disabled balance. I disabled you know um, stuff like that. It's just using the default settings like the velocity vector, you know, being in the x direction and yada yada yada. So um, I have homing projectile turned off. I'm not using this implementation of it at all. Um, you could accomplish this just by setting the velocity of this projectile. You could, you know, I, you don't have to use a projectile movement. You could use other methods, uh, but they'd accomplish the exact same goal. So what, um, what it does after it sets the rotation is it comes in and it sets the uh, projectile velocity. And I basically have it set up to just keep multiplying itself by 1.1. So if it starts out at 200, it'll be 220, and then take 10% more of 220, which would be an extra 22. And you know, you just keep adding it on. So it kind of ramps up exponentially ish. You know, it just kind of keeps, it's like interest. Uh, it accrues quickly that way. If you wanted to, you could use a linear ramp, just, you know, interpolate it you could do it that way as well uh, it's not necessary it just depends on what you want so this was the big hard part here what would happen is is you would shoot the projectile and if there was some odd chance on a really fast moving character like the one that was going up and down up and down uh, it would overshoot and it wouldn't hit the target and it would miss so after a lot of fumbling around I mean I couldn't really find anything on this online I was trying to look up you know how do I invert the vector direction and so on and so forth and it was just way more complicated than it needed to be um, I found this nifty function here create vector from yaw and pitch so what I do is I take the length of the velocity vector and I pipe that in for length. And then I take the actor rotation. I only need the uh, the pitch and the yaw. The roll is useless. This isn't going to be a spiraling projectile. Uh, you can implement that in if you wanted to. You know, just add something to that uh, after the fact. And it creates it. So, um, and it multiplies it and it sets it. And this solved everything. I was going through hell trying to figure this out. So, uh, this will make sure that the velocity vector is always facing the target no matter what. And so then after that, um, I don't I don't know if I have time to really go over it, but basically I just mostly set the projectile. I had made a new object type and all this. It's not super necessary. I actually don't even need any of this. I just need it to be set to overlap. So what it does is it comes in and on um, overlap, it compares the hit actor or the, the overlapped actor with the player character. Um, it makes sure that I'm not hitting it with my player character. If that's false, then it comes in and it uh, checks to see if it's inter or if it's interacting with the object that I have selected that it was fired at, and only if that's true, it'll come in. It'll do this one time. It'll just you know uh, spawn emitter at the location of that actor. You could get fancier with this. I didn't bother, and then you know it'll destroy itself. Uh, here's where you would put like. Other things like uh, you know other sounds, you name it. But the point of the story is is that it will allow you to check to hit even the fastest moving targets possible. It will never miss now, and this is extremely handy for you know RPGs with spells that never should miss. And uh, that's that. So. It, it works fine and it will not overlap with any other target or it won't explode on any other target so there you have it a homing projectile that'll always hit the target and only that target thanks for watching